your view will be considered by some extremely controversial. They are your views. Good to have no, you on the show. I, I Thank disagree. you. My name is Low Key. I'm a hip hop artist and political campaigner and student of history. <laughs> If the song Terrorist, for example, was that popular, just off a YouTube video, what would be the consequence if it was played daytime on Radio 1? Do you think people would just suddenly not like the song or not listen to it? But what he's saying is unacceptable to be played at that time of day to that audience, not because it wouldn't resonate with them, actually quite the contrary, because if it resonates with them, what are the consequences of that? They're calling me a terrorist, like they don't know who the terrorist When they put it on me, I tell them this, I'm all about peace. This is out. Sorry. No, no, that's out. You got it. And what was your name, brother? Ethan. Hi. Came to man to see my boy Low Key. Dude's a rhyme spitter just like me. Synthesizing energy for energetic symphony. Yes, bro. Love you, man. Love you. We signed up. We've met before. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Oh, amazing. It's very small. Okay. What's your name? Alana, A L A N A. Is that him in hell? I can breathe and be happy. What a babe. What a babe. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks very much. If we think about data when understanding this, Chris Hunter, uh, former employee of the British government, as an analyst of terrorism, put it this way. Your chance of being in a terrorist attack in this country are one in 16 million. You have a hundred thousand times more chance of dying in a car crash. Now, austerity in this country across the last 10 years has caused the preventable deaths of 130,000 people. Now that's more people than are actually in the Conservative Party in terms of membership. There are 124,000 members last time I checked. So what that means is that you are statistically far more likely to die in this country because of austerity than you are because of terrorism. And those numbers mean something. He's the man who got me uh, involved in thinking about Palestine, loads of things. The song Relative probably genuinely changed my life. I've wanted to see the man for years. He's a true legend to me, which is a word that gets bound about a lot, but he is a true legend to me. As soon as I saw you playing here, I just had to get a ticket, basically. There was no choice. He speaks the truth. Yeah.
he's one of them people when I met like his energy was right. So I'm pe certain people's energies are off and I just think we're on, we're on a different side spiritually. We're on a deeper thing. I just feel like you're on the other side spiritually. Yo, kids! When my man represents something like that, it come like an inspiration to me. Yeah, and then you're just, you're just gonna so smash much, it, bro. I appreciate bro, it, man. Thank I you for coming, in, bro. I'm not, I don't even give you the superlatives right now, but I love my body. You know how much I mean to this, you know what I mean? You just keep doing you, much fella, you know what I mean? Plenty cities. But uh, what I want you lot to do right now is make sure that Bronx Town, from Small Leaf to Spark Hill, is gonna make sure they remember this gig in this city. We have a habit of remembering our heroes and our kings.
when it's too late. But one of our heroes and our kings is backstage right now. Jamal's song, name means beauty, a weed is far gone Headlines associate kids with waterboarding and car bombs Jamal's from, same part of the world You got the guitar from, still a wonderful world Sing it like Louis Armstrong <laughs> Thank you, brother. I'll see you again, yeah? It's a good question. Because when we say any words for the camera, what we're talking about is we're talking about the people on the other end of it, which depend on what we do with the footage. So if this footage was to go out, it could potentially be words for one person, which is you, or words for thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands, or maybe even millions of people. So at the moment, I don't really have any words for people, man. Now he's back. Thank you very much. No worries, no worries, let's save time. So thank you. To start with, I would really love to bring some reality back to this conversation. Oxford University, with all of the uh, illustrious history that it has, surely it can come up with something less reductive than the Arab world to refer to millions of human beings. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Surely, surely we have consensus here that human beings are interconnected and interdependent, and in fact, the planet is not split into separate worlds. We've come far enough. Civilizations build on each other, not each to their own. My question if people are equal like the teeth of a comb. Where Jahif, Mansa Musa, Malik Najashi, Abid, I didn't think so, but it seems Shabi Nasi, what I need. Check yourself, check Raphael's depiction of Ibn Rush. Think twice, study history, give it a different look. Curriculum's literally littered with pitfalls of ridicule. Fatim al Fahri. Founded one of the oldest still existing schools is deeper than some rhymes I'm providing for the listener No surprises for a spit of the word Cypher came for Sifr Is the next Yunus Mahmoud Among four million orphan babies What if Yusuf Martini Wasn't able to swim to safety It could be Steve Jobs Is starving under Hisar It would be Zer Hadid Just dead in the infrajar Through your veins Flow Gilgamesh And Abu Nawaz Your future's bigger than the pain Of your present and your past For a while it's me estimated Just a Resistance.
lessons from Mahiba Khurshid and Layla Khalid learn about Jamal from Bo Azza, Bo Basha and Bo Harid Fabdul Qadr was reburied in Al Jazeera Rasta Proof return will come for diaspora of the neck but not the first or the last to break free from the guillotine yesterday Al Jazeera Tomorrow follow stay not the first or the last to break free from the guillotine yesterday Al Jazeera Tomorrow follow stay Six, Article 49 of uh, the Geneva Convention um, outlaws the moving of citizens of an occupying power from inside that power to the state it occupies. Israel has built up across the peace process illegal settlers in the West Bank that number almost 600,000 people. They have access to over 70% of the clean water in the West Bank. We have seen the peace process as a subterfuge for the continued colonization of Palestinian land and ethnic cleansing of Palestinian people from their homeland. Um, if you look at the law even within Israel, yes, there are 1.5 million Palestinians who have Israeli citizenship that have the right to participate in elections, as do, I might remind you, the illegal settlers in the West Bank, by the way. However, those people, those Palestinians within Israel, what they have is Israeli citizenship. They don't have nationality. Their nationality sure. is defined as Arab. Legal rights group Adala have identified over 50 laws within Israel that enshrine inequality between Jews and Arabs. Now, mm. Ehud Barak said it, it's either racism or democracy. And that's a clear choice for us. It's not a difference between Jews okay. and Palestinians. It's a difference between those that believe in the equality of all and those that believe in the supremacy of some. They depicted us as simpletons and criminals. Mind games despicable. 200,000 people in homes which are just not livable. And Arconic and Celotex still remain invisible. Are they invincible? Or do they think we are pitiful little fools? We will not betray the dead. This is a message to the government, and I hope this message breaks through. Regulate them before we regulate you. Yes. This is a message to the government, and I hope it gets through. Please arrest them before we arrest you. Thank you very much. caused Grenfell was a confluence of three issues that are really the basis of neoliberalism. So there's re-regulation in the interests of capital at the expense of human life. And so we see that in not only Thatcher taking what were 300 pages plus of building regulations and replacing them with around 24 pages of building regulations. But we also see it in Prescott in 2003, approved document B, the alterations that were made then allowed combustible cladding to be, to be fitted for buildings. Um, you also see uh, local government basically converted into conduits of corporate power. So while national government may be a facilitator of corporate power, 
local government and with the example of uh, Kensington and Chelsea is a you know, perfect example. You have them today coming out with £220 million property portfolio private property portfolio for Kensington and Chelsea you know there is um, legislation set in place that when a construction company is building a new um, complex in in, a, in an area they can escape the obligation for affordable housing within that new complex by paying a fee to the mm. local government and the Royal Borough of Kensington and Chelsea according to um, New York Times received um, 33.4 million pounds in these types of payments in um, September 2016. The deputy leader of RBKC, um, Rockfielder Mellon, who actually was responsible for the change from a fire resistant zinc cladding to the cladding that was used. And that actually violated EU procurement uh, rules because if you were gonna make that change, you should have given the other companies the opportunity to bid for it, which he didn't do. He just went ahead and made that change against the wishes of the community. And, um, and they went ahead and changed it to the iconic six millimeters of polyethylene um, cladding. So that's the second of these three issues. The third issue is, of course, you know, austerity in a situation where you've got a thousand jobs in the fire service cut, you've got a hundred million pounds cut from the fire service, you've got something like uh, 10 fire stations closed down, 29 fire engines uh, out of use. You know, when fire deaths were up by 20%, you had uh, fire funding in the borough cut by 50%, you know. So you're in a situation where not only when the fire brigade came, where they blocked off from three sides of the building by the refurbishment and by the building of the school, which Grenfell Action Group had warned would make things disastrous in the instance of a fire, they had to bring in a ladder from Surrey in order for them to get halfway up the building. They went in with walkie-talkies that didn't work. And then on top of that, which is also indicative of what you have in other buildings that have this poisonous cladding and insulation in, they had a stay put policy. You know, this is absolutely disastrous. People were told to stay in their homes. The fact is, is those three main issues, I feel, you know, it's a confluence of those three mm. issues that cause great And you help us in our campaign for justice and make sure that nobody goes through what we went through and we hold these scumbags to account. <laughs> now, five days ago, London, five days ago, was the 22-month anniversary. And what we do is we gather underneath the tower and we march in silence. We walk dignified and united and we disturb their peace with peace. And there's something that I want to do with you today that they do at the end of that march. Please, I'd love to do this with you, London. I'm going to shout out justice. I want to hear you guys shout out justice. Let's do it. Justice!
educated Yes I'm rated but sometimes I feel underestimated I'm only 23 rebelling in this crazy city I can't do this by myself I need you lot to change it with me I believe